Um, I'm going to minister to you today out of the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. And uh, how many of you have ever drawn a blank? <laughs> Not alone. Um, all week long, all week long, I talked into the Lord and I looked at scriptures and I just did not have anything, and we came home yesterday, did not have anything, and the, the Lord kept impressing me to read the 8th chapter of Romans. So I did that, and um, God has given me some things I want to give you, and uh, just take it that it's from the Lord, and it's from the Word of God. We can't go wrong with the Word of God. Do you believe that this yes. morning? Amen. Amen. Romans 8, verses 1 through 8, and on that... That star, star, that's not a cuss word. <laughs> so I did not give them a, but I'm going to let you change that. Um, I'm going to title today's sermon, Override. And uh, I'm, override. Do you guys know what it means to override something? Okay, you know what override means. Not overdrive, override. And uh, I always am enjoy asking you questions. I like to look at your faces and see if you're really answering truthfully or if you're just, you know, deer in the headlight look. How many of you know what's right, but sometimes you choose what's wrong? Any of us? All of us are guilty. All of us are guilty. Lord, anoint your word today. Give us a challenge in our hearts and our minds. We pray this in your name. Amen. I'm going to share something that uh, we know what's right, but we choose what's wrong. And even as your pastor, as leadership, and as your minister, I don't always make right choices. And sometimes, we just, in the heat of the moment, we make a poor choice. And I'm going to share, I, I told you I'm pretty, I'm pretty open with you guys, but I'm going to share what's happened to me this week. Uh, Dale and I had the pleasure, we stayed for, from Saturday to Saturday at our oldest daughter's home and uh, we stayed the, the kids are an easy keep they're 13 and 14 the only downside for me is cooking in a kitchen for hungry people that I'm not familiar with the kitchen but we did okay we did not starve okay but um, knowing what's right and doing what's wrong there's danger for the soul of man in that and there's danger for the soul of man when you continue to do what's wrong and you know what's right, but you override the Holy Spirit. Now, I had three of my grandchildren in tow, and I was a big spender. I told them, we were uptown doing errands, and I, they didn't go without this one, you guys, okay? I said, I gotta go to the dollar store, everybody can get one thing, which is really a buck and a quarter now. <laughs> But they said, one of them harassed me that I was so generous to get them all something. I meant pick your own candy, your own gum, you know, pick something to leave the store with. And as we walked in the store, I'm not proud of this, but I'm just going to share with you how quick we can override what's right. Okay? As we walked into the store, and OMAC, I don't know if you've been there a lot lately, but it's, over, it's a different OMAC than when we left five years ago. And there was a person panhandling outside of the store. And he was drinking a real expensive energy drink. And he asked me for money. And it hit me wrong. And I said, stop panhandling and get a job. And he told me to find him a job. I kept walking because if I had kept engaging, I would probably went to jail. <laughs> it hit me wrong and it made me angry. And then the minute it was over, I regretted that I said that to him. What I should have done was kept my mouth shut and prayed for him. Okay, I'm being raw and honest with you because that wasn't a very pretty side of me. So then, of course, the 13 and 14 year old grandchild jumped right on it later, like grandma. And then the soon-to-be 18-year-old, they were real quick to tell her when she showed up that night. She said, Grandma, why didn't you invite him to church? I asked her if she wanted to fill the pulpit for me this morning. But hear my heart. I overrode the Holy Spirit. And I acted in the flesh. And that's what I want to minister to us today. Now, I told you that. Not because I'm proud of it, but I want you to recognize the reality of living and walking in the flesh 
versus walking in the Spirit. Romans 8, 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enmity against God, which means it's hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And I want to just challenge each and every one of us as we're walking out our journey and as we're trying to make a difference in our community, and we're trying to make a difference. See, I didn't try to make a difference. I tried to prove my point. God's not asking you to prove your point. God's asking us to make a difference in the soul of men and women around us. I failed miserably that day. But you and I have to adapt to the thought that we've got to live through the Spirit of God in us. Let the Spirit of God actively make your decisions with you. Make your decisions. Had I asked the Spirit of God to give me a word or a hug for that person, I would have responded to him very differently. But I interacted in the flesh. And for those of us and all of us, if you guys haven't done that particular one, I imagine you can come up with something of your own that you've reacted in the flesh. But I want us to be more mindful to act in the Spirit. we got to have some decisions based on God's guidance. Amen? When we make our decisions, we, we search and we hunger for and we want God's mind, His decisions for us, and base our decisions on what He knows is best for us. How many of you have heard you've got to get your mind set to something? That's maybe an older saying. Uh, you've got to get your mind set. And I can tell you today we've got to set our minds on the things of God. Because if we're not setting our minds on the things of God, I can guarantee you the flesh will enter in. The flesh will enter in. And it will take over what's good and what you should be doing for the spirit of the living God. Amen? So we want to set our mind on the things of God. I looked up the word flesh just... I like to look up meanings. You know, you know what you know, and then I like to see what the dictionary tells me. But it, uh, one of the flesh meanings and defined in a dictionary is the principal power of sin. So when we yield to the flesh, we have a tendency we're going to yield to a sinful nature of man. And I will tell you, the old rugged cross that we sang is what stands against the old sinful nature of man because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But we don't want to yield and always be given in to the flesh. But doesn't it? I'll just ask, because I can. I'm up here and you're down there. <laughs> That's the perk of having to be up here by myself. <laughs> How many of you have occasion if you want to yield to the flesh? Uh, Why? There's pleasure. There's I told you so. There's attitude. There's a lot of things when we yield to the flesh. It doesn't mean it's good for us. But it's real. Romans 8, I want to read verses 9 through 14 while we're still here in this book. This script, this, I'd like you, I challenge you to read this entire chapter this week. And read it more than once if you need to. I need to. Because this chapter is dealing with you and I living a life in the Spirit of God. Amen? Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Verse 14. 
For as many that as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I want to be a child of God. I want to be His child. I want to be led by the Spirit. I don't want to be led by the flesh. But as long as we're here in this world, we are going to have to contend with the flesh. And I don't know if any of you have as much trouble as that. You're like, well, you're the preacher. You're something that you're No, I'm dealing with the flesh every day of my life. All of us. If you are trying to follow Christ, your flesh is going to try to show up. But you can put it under the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen? We have to remind ourselves that, that this is not talking about a feeling, and it's not talking about emotions on how you feel. It's the spirit of the living God in you. How many of you have made an emotional decision to do something, and you're all for it until you got to get dressed and leave your house? Or you know what I mean? You, you're all for something, and then the reality of what you're all for hits home, and you want to back out? See, that's our emotions making decisions for us. Anybody make emotional decisions ever? Come on, come on. Anybody, anybody buy something and have buyer's remorse? You know, it's real. But we don't go with our spirit, man. What I'm after today with the soul of man, you and I are not going by feelings and by emotions. We, this scripture tells me that you and I have the spirit of the living God in us. He guides us. He directs us. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. See, there's life and power by his spirit in our mortal body. This isn't going to last. This is temporary housing. Temporary housing. But you know the problem we sometimes make? We like to treat this housing as if it's just eternal. It's not. It's the soul of man. This is temporary. So we have the power of the Holy Spirit active in our lives. And it tells me here it has power over, it'll quicken your mortal body by His Spirit. Meaning to me, His Spirit can override your flesh if you yield to it. But you got to want to yield to it. You have to want to. Mortal is a contrast um, to a divine God. See, we are just here for a season. God is eternal. He always has been. I could never figure that out in, when I was a little girl. But I was born and raised in church, so I just knew I needed to trust what they told me. Okay? I could never, in the beginning was God. I was like, but yeah, but where? It don't matter. In the beginning was God. He's eternal. He always has been and he always will be. Did you guys have those questions when you were little in church? Come on. And then I was telling someone in the kitchen today, when I was a little girl, I remember at church, they would say, uh, all liars will have a, their place in the lake of fire. That's scripture, people. Don't lie. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. It'll set you free. I was so afraid to lie, even as a kid. My mom would come out, me and my cousin, we played together. We were closest in age. We played together a lot. And my mom would come out and say, did you girls da 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 da? And I'd be like, yep. My cousin Debbie would say, no, we didn't. I'd be like, yes, we did. <laughs> Even at a young, accountable age, I knew I did not want to spend eternity in hell for lying. We were um, at a store and we picked up some other things. Guys, you got to feed these 13 and 14 year olds. They have hollow legs. So we're at a store and we come out in OMAP. And Dale found something at the garbage. I know, isn't that awful? But it was a man thing, and he wanted it. And it was a container that used the liquids, but it had a really great spout on it. And he's like, I want that when we go home. And I said, we'll put it in the car. He said, I'll get it on our way back. And we parked way out. As we left, now here's the part. We left with a four-year-old. I talk about the grandkids. You just got to see them for yourself. But anyway, the four-year-old's blonde, this big. She knows she's got the world by the tail. She said as we walked out, I was letting her carry her stuff, and she was quite proud of her purchase. And um, I had a few things in my hand, and we walked out, and he stopped by that garbage, and he grabbed that thing. It's like a, I don't know. Anyway, you can tell I'm real interested. <laughs> she's four years old. And he picked it up and to carry it to the car. It was at the garbage. And she said, did you steal that? <laughs> <laughs> no, we probably gave her her first lesson in dumpster diving. <laughs> but hear my heart. 
If a four-year-old in their little spirit man, she doesn't know God, she has never been in a church house, breaks my heart. But if she doesn't even know anything about God, she knows right from wrong at four years old. Now, that doesn't mean she always does right. <laughs> but hear my heart as seasoned, mature Christians. When we are living and we have called on Christ, we need to be acting on our rights and our wrongs. And we need to stop overriding the Holy Spirit in our lives and stop yielding to the flesh. Turn with me to Ephesians 4.20. You guys didn't come to hear about my grandkids. <laughs> Surprise! He, uh, let's turn to Ephesians 4, 22 and 24. I want to close with some scriptures in this book this morning. I hope that when you leave here today that something has helped you to understand the importance of following the Spirit of God in your life versus going and yielding to the flesh. Amen? Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 tells us this. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We have to put off the old man, amen? And our faith in Christ will do that for us. Our faith in Christ will help the old man die. It'll help him lose the strength and the power he has over us is when we begin to put off the old man and we choose the spirit of the living God. We have to have faith in Christ. Amen. How many of we want our faith in Christ? We don't want to be just walking around according to the flesh. That's what I did from the car to the entrance of that store. I was walking in the flesh that day. I was not walking in the spirit of the living God. And that's how quick and how fast something can change in your demeanor. Okay, maybe not you guys if you all have halos. But listen, it can change in a heartbeat, and it's not pretty. We want to walk according to the spirit of the living God. We have to desire change. We have to desire to live for Christ versus living for self. Does that hurt? Selfishness has no place in the kingdom of God. There's no place for selfishness. But we want to change our lives because Christ is changing them with us, with his Holy Spirit. Let's stay in Ephesians 4 and let's look at verses 29 through 32. I'm going to get in your business in a minute. You do what you need to do with it. I'm just going to give it. You're up to it. You are now responsible. You say, well, I didn't know that was in the scripture. It is. 29 through 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Do you see in the Holy Spirit here what it does for us? It seals us. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32. That baby's happy. He likes my preaching. I don't know if you guys do or not. Amen. Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You and I, when we operate in the flesh, we grieve the Holy Spirit. That's scripture. We grieve the Holy Spirit to operate in the flesh. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And I know I grieved the Holy Spirit last week when I interacted the way I did. It was wrong. I want to please God with all of my interactions. All of my interactions. See, this is where we grieve the Holy Spirit when we override what we know is right to do and we choose to do what's wrong. Amen? Boy, you guys are quiet. Not an amen one. Amen. 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 Stop overriding the Holy Spirit in your life and choose what's right. Verse 32 says this, And be ye kind one to another, tender heart, and forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. 
Uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we say it here in this church frequently, and I love it, but sometimes we say it on autopilot and we don't know what we're saying. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Forgive us our sins in the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And we forgive those that have sinned against us. Uh, I learned it out of the King James Version. I don't know what we recited out of here, but uh, it's the same message. But we have, to, we have to forgive. We've been forgiven and we must forgive. And we've got to override the flesh with the spirit of the living God. God bless you.